Hey everyone, it's the second stop on Beardy and the Beast's summer road trip. All summer long, we'll be having full spoiler discussions revolving around destination-adjacent films. Or as you might, you'll not be able to fool those spoilers into going to the wrong place. If you like what we do, please like and follow, or join the discussion in the comments or at our Discord. A full list of services we're available on can be found at beardyandthebeast.com. As always, my name is Drew, and like usual, he's wrinkling our past. Devin? I guess it do bring up a past more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> Today we'll be discussing 1995's animated father-son bonding film, a goofy movie. So, Dev, did this suck, or did it yuck? How long did you, how long did you spend on that one? It came to me. It was fluid. <laughs> Um, oh, you want to hear a story from when I was a kid that's embarrassing and I'm going to put it on the internet? Yes. So I was a little POS when I was, like, in grade four. Was it four? It was, I was young. That's about right. <laughs> so I think her name was Lisa and it was Valentine's Day. And we were giving every child, everyone, um valentine's cards and on hers i wrote yuck and i gave it to her and she cried and then my teacher came up and she was like that's very mean you shouldn't do that and i'm like what it's like it's like goofy he says yuck <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry lisa don't hate me don't worry i'm sure she does you ruined her childhood <laughs> <laughs> How dare I? <laughs> um, anyways, that's going on the internet forever. Um, I I enjoyed the film. It's been a long time since I watched it. Mm -hmm. uh, there were definitely some some um, memories that came back with as watching it. Um, so the one thing right off the bat, just kind of that me for a, a little bit of loop is because this is of course right in the middle of the golden age of of disney mm -hmm. right right a, a renaissance and now i i know that this was definitely like based off of the tv series goof troop yeah this film was originally supposed to be released like lion king and this movie swapped places so this was always a theatrical film really Yes, like it was originally supposed to be released when Lion King was, and for reasons it swapped. Why did it look so much like a made-for-TV animation? <laughs> well, it's kind of like, and all the follow-ups to it, all the goofy follow-ups were all made for TV, right? Yeah, yeah. I, it felt so straight to DVD. They even had off-model Disney, uh, Mickey Mouse, and Donald Duck. <laughs> I'm not wrong, right? They, they looked so off model to me. Oh no, no, no! You're you're definitely right. <laughs> <laughs> like you you could be like, oh, they're like child versions of them. It's like they're in the middle of it. They're 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 in the middle lane of the interstate hitchhiking. Yep. <laughs> I guess I'll just kind of straight say it straight up this movie didn't age well yeah um i'm debating as to whether or not it was actually funny when it was released it definitely didn't age well like there were again those are some of those memories like pretty much everything Polly shore character said was like i remember like my siblings memeing the crap out of it that actively but, um, took away from my enjoyment of the film. Oh, oh yeah, no, I, I agree completely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but remember, we were dumb kids then. <laughs> Polly Shore, actually, I was going to say, uh, Polly Shore hasn't been funny since Biodome, but I don't know when Biodome was released, and I don't even know if he was actually funny during 
I want to say 91. No, I, I was probably Encino Man. Oh, I might be thinking Encino Man. But yeah, Biodome was 96. Oh. Well, I mean, technically that means he could have been considered funny in this one. <laughs> <laughs> By your definition. Well, he, he, um, did, he did the... Um, for the movie, though, he did the whole um, Robin Williams thing where he didn't want to be credited, so it would it wouldn't take away from the film or that wouldn't be yeah. the focus. Yeah, yeah, he didn't want to get screwed like uh, like Robin Williams did. Yes. Man, that is some legalese that happened with him. Mm. It always is. Well, because he didn't want to be in any more than a quarter of the promotional material. Mm-hmm. So they made him a quarter of every piece of promotional material. <laughs> like physically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the genie is so large on it. And that's why he didn't come back for Return of Jafar. But came back for the third one because they sorted stuff out, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sorted stuff. They added another O to the, uh, the old paycheck. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um... So, yeah, I, I don't think it aged well. Um, things that entered my head was, um, that's right, the 80s didn't hit Canada till like 93, because all of the music felt 80s to me, not 90s. Um, and... Again, animation style we've already kind of talked on. Like, you could tell it was... It felt to me very much like the same team that worked on the tv series not their you know big budget guys i don't know they're making movies like lion king or something hmm. while i enjoyed the movie there's definitely some things that i'm like recognizing now and like the cultural zeitgeist that is a hundred percent nostalgia goggles like roxanne roxanne right like you know you still see her pop up like everywhere and she's got like two lines in the movie because she's a cutie she is a cutie but like the class president that i forgot about actually had more <laughs> character going on <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> in typical drew fashion i've watched this movie for the first time again uh, i all i remember was the leaning tower of Chiza. Yep. And it wasn't until he pulled it out, I was like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. Other than that, this is, yeah, might as well have been a first watch. Yeah. Yeah. That was, um... Like, I've listened to a couple of the songs here and there. I mean, they're not bad songs, it's just, I don't know... It did not feel like what 90s teenagers were listening to. Yeah, I guess. Like, again, it felt like what 80s teenagers were probably listening <laughs> to. <laughs> you know, some like, I don't know, basing the character off of Prince or something might affect that style a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they, they also had... Uh... I mean, there's... The, as, except for when Goofy was singing, the songs were all right. Yeah, um, probably because they hired a like a musical actor singer for a non musical movie. That um, musical actor for the non musical movie didn't sing. What? <laughs> he didn't <laughs> sing his own parts. <laughs> I read that. I think I, I think I read that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then what was so this movie is not a musical. Yeah. They had a musical actor yep. on staff and they yes. did not sing. Yes. Because they had someone else sing. Yes. <laughs> I mean, <yuck>. <laughs> 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 Uh, just Disney thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized this is actually our first Disney movie, isn't it? 
Uh, one of the live I mean, action ones were. I think we can make a push for um, Roger Rabbit. One of us. Yeah, I guess. And if I mean, if we're going to like <laughs> uh, distribution, then Mononoke. Yeah. Only because okay. we we did dubbed, <laughs> right? Yes, we did do the dub to that one. So. <laughs> Never again. So bad. <laughs> the, <laughs> I just, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do about this film because it wasn't good. And I wonder if they knew at the time. As in, like, the reason why this and Lion King swapped around is they expected this to be a banger. Mm. But it plainly wasn't. Well, so I think part of the issue is, again, it felt like the straight to DVD mm. release. And that's, and I'm not saying that to disparage the film. It, it's, it's it's just the, the quality of it. So when you have this going to the theater again in the midst of everything else we have coming from Disney, mm -hmm. it, it feels out of place, but it feels very much in line with a lot of the TV shows that were out at the time. Mm -hmm. So again, it feels very much like Goof Troop or Animaniacs or Bonkers. Right? So Again, it's that very much product of its time without being without having that timeless aspect that, you know, some of the other films we've seen have. Yeah, firmly, firmly placed on your like childhood Saturday morning kind of feel. It'd be kind of like if. Uh, like 10 years from now, we watched a Ben 10 movie or something. Yeah, it would probably feel much the same actually well i mean i i feel like they've learned their lessons in some of those so i don't know if that would be like a true saying a lot of the movie conversions nowadays actually do pretty well if you're not uh the last airbender i mean really depends on who gets their hands on it nowadays <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be honest <laughs> So, so kind of stepping back and like looking at the product at the time, like I don't think, like as we've mentioned, I don't think the jokes landed. No, I I do think the the music were, and as you said, except when Goofy was singing. And let's face it, there's a clear stylization that's happening with Goofy singing. Yeah, I mean the the pieces were a bop. It's not like you know, Fivel singing. Uh, <laughs> thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. Um. Oh, because that's actually what, complete side note, that's what brought up the whole road trip theme. It was while we were watching that. I don't know, I was probably intoxicated. I had to drink away the pain of Fivel singing. And you're like, <laughs> I have this great idea. How about it? Next summer, our theme should be summer road trip. And then I hear it again. I'm like, when was this? Where did these movie names come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I went and listened to Somewhere Out There because it's <laughs> an amazing song. Um, way <laughs> out there. Such a bop. It really is. Um, so I was listening to other. Anyway, that's a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this um, back on to um, the trip to uh, LA. <laughs> um, <laughs> to Destiny. I'm going to blow 5,000 hours. <laughs> I think the story in and of itself was fairly solid, even though I know it's um, you know, built on your favorite uh, plot device. No one talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Um. <laughs> uh, I, you know what I wasn't I wasn't gonna say a thing because I know it's not a trope yet I'm trying to not make it a trope but I just <laughs> absolutely loathe any movie where the primary conflict is just no one talking to each other 
Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, it didn't feel as forced as, like, some other things that we've seen. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... I should make you watch, uh... Was it This Is How I Live Now? <laughs> All right. Entire movie could have been prevented if if the, the young, uh, headstrong girl just listened to an adult one of, like, six times before the conflict started. Oh, yeah, good luck with that. And throughout the conflict... <laughs> well, like, yeah, it's like, like, I didn't mind how they actually did it in this film. Like, it, there was very much that, you know, the teenager just being a headstrong teenager. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I think they played on Goofy's, I actually believed Goofy's adult fears throughout the film. Yes. And his motivation, right? So even it's like, you know, he has the Pete telling him, it's like, oh, it's going to be in a gang or something. And then the principal calling and just giving all of that. It's like, nope. It's like, cool. I need to do something about this right away. No questions. We're just doing it, which. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. So. And because of that, again, it made sense that they didn't have that communication. And, you know, it really didn't take long I mean, I guess it would, would have taken like a day or, I don't know. Time makes no sense in this movie. That's, that is an issue. <laughs> um, but like, let's say it's okay. A day or so after they actually have their talk and yeah, things seem to get a little bit better. I yeah. mean, they handled it well, except Max is like a liar all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, that's the thing. Like Max is choices made sense like your your headstrong teenager and all you can think about is a, a girl and you you lied and now everything you're doing is just reinforcing that and kind of like digging the hole deeper yeah and the miscommunication with goofy like the father that's trying to bond but he's also not approaching max at a level that he should Mm. just be like no I'm your dad we need to talk about this yeah um I think story wise I do like that that ended up being like the arc and the conflict and um how we kind of ended up at the climax like getting through the resolution of that and then you know working together to uh actually get to the concert and on stage Mm -hmm. but they were building it up and everything was revolving around this lie that I was actually hoping for more father-son hijinks of getting into the concert. Mm. I, w I was actually hoping that it was going to be a more major thing in the film. Yeah. And I was sad that it was like 20 seconds and then... Like, there wasn't anything of it. Actually, throughout the entire movie, I was going to be like, they're going to get there, and he's going to uh, meet Powerline, and it is going to be his dad's old friend. And um, he was in a band with him when they were younger or something like that, right? I was kind of hoping for that, because like, I'd forgotten that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think... Yeah, I think they should have either, either gone that way or, you know, actually again, had the timeline make a little bit of sense. Mm. Because, like, once he, once he, in particular, like, once he gives Max the map, yep. makes him navigator, Um, they did way too many things when they explicitly told us they have, like, another two days. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you went to, like, three different Six Flag theme parks in this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean continuity sure but like thinking about actual screen time hmm. I, I think they should have like shortened the Bigfoot thing by half yeah. and put that more on to the like working as a father son duo mm -hmm. dealing with this concert um, like we didn't even see them getting into the luggage yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, uh, part of that is like the whole, 
it's a very early Disney cartoon thing to just have happen. Yeah, and I, and I think that, I think that's part of like the the issues when it comes to the the dating of this as well because it's still goofy. Mm -hmm. So you've got to so you've got to think back to like those shorts and such as well because that does have a influence in some of the choices. Mm -hmm. um, it was. Yeah. How do you feel about them minimizing the goofyisms of a goofy movie? It hmm. like they they saved the the major like nostalgic goofy humor throw uh, back to the very end when the car exploded and he went through the the roof and was like yuck yeah like that's an old very old style of humor and they. They seem to abandon it, mostly. I, it's again one of those things that I... I liked being able to explore Goofy this way. Mm. And I guess it's... Opposed to other ways. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> it's um <laughs> I honestly didn't even quite realize that until you mentioned it because um a lot of the goofyisms is also gone in things like Kingdom Hearts. True. Because you can't really deal with that many goofyisms for that long it works in a very short format it doesn't work as soon as you go to a long format yeah and like a clip show or uh i guess they're not they're not they skits per se yeah shorts that's yeah they're yeah. shorts um so it's like it started with a bit of goofyisms and ended with a bit of goofyisms but and part of it too is it's I think this is also where some of that iffiness of the film comes from is I think they pushed it too hard to be about Max when it very clearly was about both. Yeah. So, I agree was, so I mean, that also is going to move away those goofyisms. And when they did happen in the earlier parts of the film, it was a, it was a source of conflict as opposed to a source of comedy. Hmm. Right? Because it was just making Max go, it's like, oh, this is my dad. <laughs> Stop embarrassing me. I can do that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do like how we kind of ended up in the tropey kind of ending point that you'd expect from like a child childhood thing, like being yourself while like do good for you in the end and tell the truth and things like that. Ah, uh, no, the total message is lie your way to the top. <laughs> well, well, that was that was that was something <laughs> that I had a problem with the the lying is like you didn't have a chance to like correct his mistake before he was swept into adventure. Yeah, and I mean, I guess with if the, he had a chance and he told the truth, then we wouldn't have a goofy movie. Yeah. See, actually, that's an interesting thing. So, like, clearly, like the lying was the catalyst, mm. and in and this is also probably one of the things that's because hmm, had this age, um, the lying was the catalyst for the film, but it was never his character growth. Yeah. Like, like the lying is just like I said. That's why the message I got is like, yeah, no, nah, lying's fine, <laughs> <laughs> because there was none of the conflict actually happened around that. And I mean, again, we don't get near enough Roxanne to actually have anything anything there for, for it to have been a point of conflict. Yeah. I, I keep getting distracted. I'm just like trying to figure out uh, it's like, where, where's Max's mom?
Uh, they are separated, and I believe technically there is no answer. And that is something I saw on like some random YouTube short like three months ago. <laughs> because apparently there's like a false memory of like her being dead or something. That is just never actually said anywhere in the show. I just like So we already we already know that Goofy Goof is a bit of a player. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of derailing this, but I like I, can't, I got I got to get this out. <laughs> I need everyone to know the gospel of the goof. Um we know that Goofy's a player. He like that whole like, oh, you're good with children like there was a connotation there. I'm sorry. I oh, saw no. something there, and it's like, oh, she she likes the goofster, right? But that that's that's not the only woman in the film that like um held some type of uh, attraction. I yeah. I think Goofy is actually a bit of a womanizer, and I think that's how he ended up with Max. But because he's actually a good guy. <laughs> he's sticking by for his kid because he's actually a decent father and we can see that Max too it like has a bit of a way with women as well alright so I like where you're going I'm going to change it slightly first of all I need to point out and there's a lot of booty shots in this film <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm like this is good for kids what the heck Goofy was pulling a rogue <laughs> oh <laughs> oh, or just like Max under the stage with the dancers up there <laughs> like you're doing this to impress a girl back home <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think this goes back to like one of those PSAs that we've had that, that we've mentioned many times in the past is it is it the one I, no, go ahead go ahead <laughs> Is it gonna be the one where one of the protagonists confronts the other protagonists about doing too many caffeine pills, and then they go, "No, I need them so I can study more and I can make the test," and then they start crying, and turns out she doesn't actually need the drugs. Um, I mean, that was one that was somewhere on my list. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's the um, remember PSA. Guys are dumb, and they do not pick up on your signals in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> to the point that you are going to make up like some crazy lies because you don't realize that she was into you well before you did any of this stuff. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> that can't be true. <laughs> so I kind of got the feeling that. Goofy didn't realize how much they were hitting. Clearly, Max understood it right from the get-go. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying Max is the player? Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, that's part of it. It's like Max wants to be a player, but just doesn't realize that he didn't need to be. <laughs> Again, caused the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's still looking up Goofy's mom. Or, I'm uh, just Max's saying, mom. it's like Max's mother's absence. Uh, Goofy movie takes place in a post apocalyptic world in which hu animal human hybrids are the last surviving vestige of humanity. Max is actually a semi artificial creation. Max's mom was a robot designed to help these hybrids <laughs> reproduce more effectively. What theories did you find? <laughs> this is why I'm distracted. <laughs> this could be an interesting series. <laughs> hey, everyone. Once Goofy uh, opens up, opens into the public domain, make it. <laughs> well, well, the, <laughs> well, the thing there's like this. There's always been that weird thing about um, this kind of universe, right? Hmm. So, Goofy is a dog man that has another dog as a pet. 
right? Like I don't. It was it Pluto. Right, I, right Pluto. Pluto's his pet. Yep. Um. Yep. You're right. So at this point, like maybe maybe Max doesn't have a mom. What, what was it called when a cell splits again? Uh, something something mitochondria. <laughs> it's the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cannot remember. Mitosis. Yeah. You're a mitosis. I I think Max is a mitosis of Goofy. I think Max thinks he's a mitosis of Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to to get a bit back on track, I think. I think some of the good stuff that they did do um, was regarding the relationship. A lot of the whole talking past each other, which is a very teenager adult thing. Um, they're... Ma Max's dream was quite obviously sent around, sent around his fears and desires. Mm -hmm. um, it was a good way to lead into the film. Yeah. Well, again, like, I think... I think a lot of the shortcomings of the film again is just that product of its time. Like mm -hmm. it was again, based off of what the show was, because this like from what I remember of Goof Troop was it was it was kind of aimed closer for like that, you know, ten to twelve year olds. Um so it still kind of relied on that very particular um cultural humor at the time mm. right so it, it's littered throughout it whereas we, and I'm sure if we went back and watched again any of those shows right if we went back and watched Goof Troop or Bonkers and such we would see that type of thing whereas the other shows that we also remember fondly from that time like Gargoyles um, it's it was already made for an older audience mm. And so it, it puts this film in this weird place of their target audience needs to have that very specific um, referential humor at the time. That makes sense. And that's probably why it doesn't age well or really grow or, you yeah. know, r reach past its generation. Yeah. And I mean, I fully realize that you and I are not representative of like appropriate age demographics when it comes to these things <laughs> yeah but we were but i remember it enough that like again we talk about that leaning tower of cheese a joke which really falls flat but those were the type of dumb jokes i was making when i was 10 and 11 yeah i guess it's just like, I guess between like eight and ten for me, it was like stuff that was released in the mid '80s, like Robotech or Mask. Mm. Secret defenders working overtime, fighting crime, fighting crime. <laughs> fighting crime. <laughs> um, um. So, like, I I don't know. I I don't want to talk for both of us, but like. I was definitely weirdly misplaced because I didn't have cable until I was mm -hmm. like a teenager. Um, so, so for me, like, I mean, I did have, have cable. Uh, but there, I mean, there was very much like the Saturday morning cartoons, which definitely had a lot more of that 80s stuff in syndication still. Um, whereas, you know, we had, the Canadian equivalent of the Disney Channel. So we were getting Goof Troop and such mm. for, for after school. Because um, I don't... Yeah, I think that only played on Family Channel. I think it played on Family Channel. Oh, fa and Family Channel was like deep cable. That wasn't like yeah, second tier like, cable that I got when I finally got cable. Yeah, it wasn't... Yeah, it was... <laughs> TV for yeah. me was... Uh, Emerald before he was big bam uh, 
soap operas that I would record for my mom and Star Trek. Because we, like, we hooked up the cable thing, but it's because that would make your, um, it would act like an antenna. Yeah. And it would... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like, that that was fine, because I had my Legos and I had my action figures. So, like, I was yeah. fine. Mostly I played outside, which is probably a novelty these days. Um, yeah. But this this movie and a lot of the, the, the Mickey Mouse stuff, Donald Duck, um, who else is there? Bugs Bunny. Not, none of these are beacons of my youth. So, like, re-encountering them with not even, like, a lack of bias, but even, like, a lack, any form of lack of nostalgia mm. uh, means that its deficiencies are even more apparent. Yeah. So I might actually be kind of biased against it simply because of that. Well, I mean, it's not... What you're saying isn't incorrect, though. It's mm. just not having that nostalgia classes in, in the same way, right? So so you're not seeing that... Where I can go, it's like, this makes sense because of the time and, mm -hmm. and what's happening. Um, you don't necessarily have that frame of reference, right? Yeah, and I mean, to be honest, like, I didn't watch much in the way of, of Goof Troop yeah. um, itself. Um... I, know, I think both of us probably actually watched a lot more of the Nick Nickelodeon stuff because that's what YTV had, right? So the things like Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy and that type of thing. Oh yeah, but uh, that I I didn't start seeing that until I was in my like mid teens. Yeah, which mind you, I think that's kind of when Rugrats was around. Yeah, not to date us or anything. Yeah. yeah. Um. But like even Ren and Stimpy, do you, I I know more about Ren and Stimpy from a Bjork music video than I do from the actual show. Yeah, that's one I never watched either. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like that. Yeah, that was definitely beyond me. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think you know. So goofy, a goofy movie is not a good movie, but it is. I think if you're 10 or 12 and it's kind of like a decent preparation for some of the trials and tribulations that you're going to go through. So it kind of goes like, no, lying about this sort of thing is not good. And like, if you, if you tell, tell your dad that you're doing it because of a girl, like he's going to be like, okay, you don't want to do it that way. You're going to want to do it this way. And be honest. And yeah. like, um, actually communicating with your parents and not lying to the girl of your dreams. These, these are important, important lessons. It's yeah. probably not the right vehicle for these sort of things. I prefer, uh, saved by the bell for that sort of thing. But, um, uh, Oh, the, um, the, uh, class president's president was six from blossom. Really? Yeah. Yeah, right? I remember Blossom. Whatever happened to Blossom? Uh, she got a bunch of degrees and then was on the Big Bang Theory and she's got another show now. Oh, yeah. I totally knew that. Yeah. That's what... She's like actually like an astrophysicist or something. It's weird the child stars, eh? They either go, like, the very intellectual or, like, corporate route, or they just do a bunch of drugs and do a bunch of terrible stuff. And some people manage to pull it back together afterwards. <laughs> the, the real question I have for you that's not related to a Goofy movie is... So, poor Brittany, right? Hmm. Like, she has a bit of a breakdown... So they put her in custodianship or whatever, and they yep. just burn her brain with lithium. Yep. So is the result we have now because of them ruining her with drugs, or is this actually just a byproduct of, like, 
the issue she was having beforehand. Man, it is so hard to tell. <laughs> like, I don't because, like, of the, like, child stars that snapped, it's like, I thought she kind of pulled herself back together. I mean, she had a similar snap to, like, how Miley did. Yeah, I guess. Right? Just, you know. Miley's but, I mean, dad put her under a receiver <laughs> conservatorship. <laughs> the the thing is, when Miley snapped, she was not Britney famous. Yeah, I guess. She is now. <laughs> but at the time, like... Yeah, okay, I could, yeah. There's, it does it does weird things to you. We we watched a father son bonding road trip movie, <laughs> and that's that's what we're talking about. Um, I, I mean I probably get keep getting distracted because there's not really much to the movie. Um, it's yeah a, a movie for ten to twelves. It's not a terrible watch. Um, it's not necessarily a good movie, but there are things redeemable about. It, is my conclusion. Yeah, I'd say it's. I'm gonna. I agree. I just raise it slightly different. Mm. I think um, from the storytelling standpoint, such I want to say it was a good movie that aged so poorly that it takes away from what mm. was actually good. Because I do think it's actually a good, strong story. Just it is so dated that it pulls away from it. And I'll concede you probably have the better neutral <laughs> position because you understand the context more than me. Mm. Uh, I mean, it probably would have been better if it was a musical. But Disney doesn't do musicals. <laughs> you know, so this is actually something... Like, I, I was going to be making this joke too. And <laughs> this one here is the weirdest thing so of all of the the disney musical things this one here is the most confusing of them <laughs> because it's like okay cool we definitely have like our i want world song like i actually really enjoyed that first number mm -hmm. it reminded me very much of um of bell um oh no i gotta was... i gotta listen to that song after we're done recording now <laughs> 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 um, like just in how it did multiple layers of things throughout from the musical piece. Like, yeah, I think I think it was it was very well done. Um, you know, we had the kind of uh, you know the open road felt very much like a chorus line musical number again. Um, the little bit where they're they're singing as they're finally like expressing their emotions and talking to each other realizing how much they have in common all that stuff before they go off a waterfall mm -hmm. you know it was good the but but then we have power line the power line songs is the, i think there was two but they might have just been the same one and playing different parts of it <laughs> yeah they they tend to do that when it comes to like when it's actually a music number in a movie about music. They'll often like cut to it, and it's like it. It's usually out of out of uh, arrangement, so it'll be yeah. like se second um, second course. But then when you're listening it to it later, it's like bridge into third or something like that. Yeah, yeah, and like. I don't have an issue with like the the diegetics of that. Like I think, you know, the one power line song at the beginning of the concert, like the beginning with Max uh, at the assembly, would have been cool. You know, having a different one at the end would have been cool. Like not have it kind of playing throughout, um, because it doesn't have the motif thing that you get with musicals. Yeah, um, it doesn't have that same purpose. But then they have the Bee Gees in this. <laughs> and I have never had a piece of music take me so out of a film. Well, that entire it felt scene. so out of place. 
Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, the Bigfoot doing disco moves is totally funny in this mid-90s made for 10 or 12 year olds. And again, it just goes back to the, I think this, it felt like the a product of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you no 10 or 12 year old is going to get that reference <laughs> it just yeah it just felt weird um otherwise yeah of all of them, this one here is like it tried to be a musical but just probably would have been fine you know not <laughs> actually use the diegetics of the bands to push the music along if that's what you want it Mm. I, uh, because yeah, I was just missing all of the other pieces to actually make it. Well, what what made it kind of discordant was you would expect in a piece that's including musical numbers to actually involve like I would say like a musical pr production suite, as in you'd have a conductor in like a series of songs and they would actually be involved in dealing with the musical numbers. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it was very um, American tale in the whole, like we're going to throw in, I guess three songs. So it's, it's technically one more song. Like I'm not counting the stage. one. Yeah. Um, one more st song than American tale. Yeah. And I mean, you don't need much to um, give it a musical spin. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't need to be every other word is, you know, a musical phrase. Yeah. But when there's nothing linking the songs, there's no true motif. Um, you end up there, like, again, you have one song that's actually pretty good, and then the rest is like, what are you even doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it did feel like more of a musical than an American Tale did. Didn't hit the mark, but no. <laughs> well, neither were um, musicals, so yeah. I, I think a big thing was is like you know, um, allegedly Disney makes musicals, so this had to be a musical. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> I mean, for people who are incorrect. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <Yeah. laughs> I think nowadays, if anyone were to watch this, they're probably going to want to watch this with like a like a seven to nine year old, maybe. Yeah. I don't think it really pushed to 10 to 12, the way like kind of humor evolves. Um, yeah. None of the Pauly Shore stuff sticks. No. Um, uh, it, like the the only thing that made me laugh out loud was the Bigfoot doing sock puppets. <laughs> um, the little the little Punch and Judy thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually thought that was funny. Yeah, but the rest was it did it didn't land. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, uh, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> Yuck indeed. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fiend. Yeah. <laughs>